the next thing we need to make is the actual comic show page. So let's stop our server. Control C. We want to touch views slash comics underscore show dot ejs. And I'm again just making these names up. That makes sense to me because it's the comics slash show page, but you can call it whatever you want. So we have comics show. First, we're going to include our partial. Include partials slash header. Always the first thing we do. And then duplicate that just footer. So we know we got that down. But now we got to figure out exactly how we want to lay this out. I've already kind of designed one. You are welcome to copy this if you want and, and code along, or you can make it your own. Eventually, I'd like you to make it your own, but for now, you're welcome to just go ahead and do this because we're still kind of learning the whole bootstrap thing. So I'm going to make a div with the class container, as always. And then inside of there, I'm going to make a div with class equals row, and I'm going to give it a margin top of four. Just kind of push it down the page a little bit. And then I'm going to put the image. Div class equals column six, because I want the image to take up about half of the screen. It's going to be on the left because it's the first one. Image container. Oops, I gotta put that inside the quotes. Image container. And then I'm gonna actually put the image. Image source equals, and then we're gonna get the image source from our database. So that's going to be using these scriptlet tags, or the, the script tag that actually insert things. So that's gonna be comic dot image because we're passing it in as a comic and the link is the image. So let's go ahead and modify the route to show this page so we can start to kind of see it take shape. So inside of the app.js instead of a res.send we want to res.render comics oops in quotes comics underscore show passing in the comic that we get back. Well we haven't gotten a comic back yet so the first thing before we actually render anything we need to query our database. If you remember from when we were talking about databases, there's a variety of different queries. I'm going to use find by ID. So comic dot find by ID, passing in the ID. The ID is going to be gotten from right here. So it is request dot params dot ID. So I'm going to find that. Then I have to do the dot exec. Get the dot exec. You have to run that on any time you're doing a query in order to get a promise back. So dot then, and it will pass back in the comic or the data, or whatever you want to call that. I'm going to call it comic because I'm just going to pass it straight in here. So then res.render, the comic show page, passing in comic. Remember, this is the same as this. Dot catch. If you have a problem, error res.send the error. That's all we're going to do. We'll fix our error handling later. So this, when we hit this, it's going to try and find comics by their ID and then send them. So let's go ahead and find a comic ID. MongoDB Atlas. Sign back in. Look at our collections. Find our comics. And now we have these object IDs. So I'm just going to hit edit so I can copy it. Copy. And then come over here slash comics slash paste that ID. Let's see if it works. My server is not running. Try this again. There we go. So now we have a show page. Right now all it has in it is an image, but that's fine. That's all we need for now. And also our data still only has title, description, and image. So we haven't updated this yet. So if we try and access any of those other things that we added on these, it will not work for these up here. So we just keep that in mind. We're going to have to go back in in just a minute and fix all those. In fact, let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and delete these and then fix. Really, let's just drop this whole table because I don't want anything on it. So back here, let's go to add some comics. So now we have all three and our data has been updated. Go to our collections, go into comics, and now we have all that data so we can access it. And right now, in order to actually see our show page, it's super annoying. We have to come in here, copy the ID, 
and then paste that ID up there. That's obviously a very bad user experience. I just wanted to be able to click on it. So I'm going to make a small change to our comics page. As of right now, this href for the um, a tag is not going anywhere. We want this to go somewhere. So we're going to add that data from the database using the script tags, the EJS tags. So it's going to be comic dot underscore ID. Now we did not define underscore ID anywhere in our model. If we look at the model, there's no underscore ID. That is done automatically by MongoDB. You can see here it has underscore ID. All of them have an underscore ID. It has to have an underscore ID or else it will not work. So in order to link to it, we simply pass that in, but we also need to go to slash comics slash that. Because remember, in our app.js, we want to go to slash comics slash ID. So on here, we want to go to slash comics slash, and then we're importing the ID from the database. So let's save, refresh this page, and see if it works. Click, there we go. Click on Batman, and there's Batman. Click on Why the Last Man, there he is. All right, so now we have that, we can close that. Let's continue working on our show page. So this image is currently taking up half the page, column six. So we have another column six that we can use on the other side, however we want. I'm just gonna do it another column six. I'm just gonna divide it equally among the image on the left and the other stuff on the right. So class equals column six. And we're gonna call this a details container. And then inside of there, we'll put an H1. And that H1 is going to have the comic title. So we'll import that from the database. Comic.title. Underneath that, we'll have the description. And again, we're going to import that from the database. Let's go ahead and save and look at that and see what it looks like. Refresh, go to there. It is kind of cool. Got the title, got the description. Does it work as well over here? Mm, not so much. So we've got some issues that we will have to handle, but we'll deal with that later. That, by the way, is due to the way the images are sized. We'll have to fix that. So underneath that P tag, I'm going to start putting a table with all of the different um, data inside of it. We shouldn't need lorem ipsum anymore, so let's go bootstrap tables. So we haven't looked at those yet. Bootstrap, as with all the other things, it has it has a lot of different options with your tables. I'm just going to stick with this very basic one. Copy, and paste it in there, save, and see what it looks like. There we go. Excellent. Now our table is only going to have two columns instead of four because we're just going to have like what it is, so the author or the publishing date or the publisher or whatever, and then the value. So we don't need all four of those, and we also don't need a header on our table. So the T head, the entire T head section can go away. I need to fix the indent on all the rest of this. There we go. And then we're going to delete the last two items off of every one of these. So the last two items, last two items, save and refresh. There we go. We got our basically key values is how that's gonna end up working. So for the first one, let's just do author. And then instead of mark, it's going to be from the database. You can see how you can kind of plug this stuff in. Comic.author. And then for the next one, we'll do the publisher. Comic.publisher. And for the next one, we'll do the, oops date, or publish date, or let's do date, let's save and refresh, see what it looks like, author Alan Moore, publisher DC, date, obviously this is not what we want, we'll fix that in post, we're going to fix that later, so we can just copy this, down, because we're also going to need a series, an issue number, a genre, and whether it's in color or not. So series, issue number, genre, and color. 
So we don't want date here. We want dot series. We want dot issue. Dot genre. Dot color. So refresh. There we go. And again, we're going to have to mess with this. We're going to have to mess with this. We don't want this to be true or false. We want it to be yes or no. We want this to be capitalized. We're going to do stuff with this later, but we're just getting the basics down. So underneath our table, and actually underneath our entire row div, right here is our row div. It's the first indentation. We're going to add another one. Div class equals row comment header margin top of three. Now that comment header is not a bootstrap thing, just like the um, image container is not a bootstrap thing. The details container is not a bootstrap thing. Those are things that I added on so that I can access them with CSS later. And this is going to be the comment header. And we're just, just going to have a little um, thing about the comments, like please leave your comments below, maybe a button to add a comment or something like that. We're going to have another one, div class equals row comment container. We're going to give this padding of Y, which is top and bottom, of 2. Inside of there, we're going to put a div class equals column 3. And this is going to be where the usernames are going to go for whoever the um, person is. So we'll just do username as a placeholder. And then div class equals column 9. Oops. Column 9. And this is where the comment text here. I saw that there's a typo there. Let's save and refresh. There we go. So it's going to be something like that with a comment header with a couple buttons that says add a comment or whatever. Then it'll have username and their text, username and their text, username and their text, just kind of tiled below there. So really the only thing left to do is to fix this image issue that happens whenever you, the images are too big. We want to kind of standardize that size. So to fix that, let's look real quickly at our um, HTML. The problem is this image right here. The way that images work in HTML is if you don't set their size, they'll automatically um, go to their the size that they that they actually are, their actual size, and that will overlap the container stuff like divs and whatnot. So what we need to do is set the size of this image. Now what I've done is I've created a image container class, so we're going to use that to um, set the width of this image. Now partials.header is being included, and inside of there. We have our um, style sheets, CSS styles.css. So inside of public, inside of CSS, we have styles.css. So here's a little trick. Right now, if I just leave this as image container and go ahead and, and set it in here, it'll work and it'll be fine and, and everything will be great until I start to make this application bigger. And then at some point in the future, I might reuse image container in another page. And then it would be very difficult and annoying to try and debug why it was acting strangely and why if I change something on image container on there it messed up everything else in the page so instead I'm going to expand this class name to name what it is the show page so show image container and this is kinda you can you can look for BEM um, convention block element modifier. Um, you can look into that. This is not true BEM. I'm not actually doing true BEM, but I'm taking an idea from them and saying, hey, the show page is the first part, underscore, and then whatever the item is. So that's how I'm going to do this. So show underscore image container, show underscore details container, all of my custom CSS, I'm going to do that. Show underscore comments header, show underscore comments container. And then inside of my styles, I can just come down to the bottom and I'll add a show section. Show underscore comments. That way I'll know, okay, all the stuff in here is for underscore is for show underscore comics. So I called it show underscore image container. And then we want it to be the image inside of that. And what we want to do is we want to set the max width, or the actual width, to about 80%, I think, should be good. And the reason we're doing we're setting it to 80% instead of max width 80% is so that way it will upscale any images smaller, and it will downscale any images larger, so they'll all be that same width. And that's 80% of the container div, not 80% of the page, 80% of that container, that column div.
and we're lucky because comic books, generally speaking, have a um, have a portrait layout. So they're they're always going to be similar aspect ratios. They won't be perfect, but it'll be similar aspect ratios for the most part. So we can go ahead and just set the width there, and we know that it's not really going to jack stuff up much, if at all. And that's it for this video. What we did is we created and added our comics um, show page. So we made this entire page. We also updated our app.js to add the um, show route, which is slash comics slash ID. In order for that to work, we are querying our database by using comic.findbyid. That's, that's one of the possible things you could search by. If you have the ID, this is going to be the fastest. So if you have the ID, use findbyid and just pass in that ID. Then we dot exec, which executes it and returns a promise. And our promise, we have a dot then, which is rendering the page, and a dot catch, which is just sending back errors if there is an error. We also updated our comic, our index route, to actually include the correct link to that comic. So it's not just linking to nothing anymore, it's now linked to slash comics slash whatever the ID is for that particular comic. As always, if you have any questions, please let me know. I'll be happy to help. Thanks.